Shaq, you've you've stay shared those stories before about Kareem and and guys like that. Dirk, did you have former players and all that that were criticizing you early in your career that gave you extra motivation? Well, you know, it was hard for me my first year. You know, back in the days, there were not that many Europeans around. And, you know, every time I, I was guarding somebody in front of the opposing bench, they were like, go at him, he's soft. I mean, I, I heard all that. I heard all that. And it's just, but that's part of it. You know, you have to you have to kind of learn how to hold your own and get, you know, draw motivation out of the, out of the, the naysayers and doubters. And all I want to do is just keep working. I, every summer I try to add something, get better, get better get a little bit stronger uh, so you can hold my own a little bit and rebound a little better. And just uh, that's what I try to do is always just just better. But there was there was guys that would go on at me all the time. I mean, KG was KG was one of them. He was wild. I mean, he would sometimes I would get out of the huddle. He would already pick me up out of the huddle and follow me nose to nose everywhere I went. And he was uh, he was hard on me early on. He tried to go at me all the time, and we even had battles later in our careers when we played against each other for a decade plus. And we still he still had that intensity, and so he was one guy that always drive me and, and motivated me. Two follow ups to that because KG literally makes me laugh every time I see clips of him yelling at people. Number one, do you remember any of the reckless? that he said to you like is there one that still makes you laugh that he said it to you no i mean it, it was a lot about you soft and and this and that so uh, that that's that's what i remember and then uh but i don't really want the specific it's kind of like you know you go in one year one out of year and you just yes. compete at the high the other the other question was do you remember when you earned his respect and he gave you that kg like head nod where instead of like thinking you're soft, he realized, oh, I'm going to be battling this guy for a decade. I think it's when, uh, when I was my first All-Star game, and, and that was, my, I think, my third or fourth, maybe fourth year, now back in the West, in the All-Star, my first All-Star. I'm in the West, all, Shaq's in there, Kobe's in there, KG, Tim Duncan. I'm like, I'm literally walking around. I'm like, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. So me and Steve Nash, obviously, who played with me, we, we got to be – uh, first time all stars together, and so to, to go through that with with my one of my best friends was uh, inc- I'll, I'll never forget my first all star. And then I think uh, KG uh, respected me a little more after that, and uh, we had some good discussions. And, and around the all star game, he's completely different. He's he's fun, you know. You talk to him in the all star mm. in, in the locker room. He's joking the whole time. I did not know he was like this because when you see him in the regular season, I mean, he's all business and all hard and all wants to just elbow you the whole time down. But in the also game, he's, he's such a fun guy. I mean, he was, he's joking around all the time. So uh, that, that one surprised me a bit. But I would say after my first All-Star game, uh, I, was, I think I was accepted a lot more. Yeah. I have heard uh, Chuck tell the story of them facing you when you were like 18, 19, and like you're tearing up Scottie Pippen, and then they come to you and they're like, who the hell are you? And you're like, listen, I got to go serve in the Army. Did you really think you were about to go serve in the Army? Like, was that like a real possibility? So I actually did. It was it was mandatory in Germany for a while. So when that team came over to Germany, I was actually in the Army. Um, and so... I did two months of, of regular basic training uh, where this was like a couple of months before that, those games. Um, and then for like six, seven months, I was in a, in, a, in a thing called a sports company where I could train then full time. I could train in the morning, train in the evening. And just um, that's really when I started to be a professional. But at the time, I was still in the army. And uh, so there were these Nike organized these games and I was able to, to, to get free from the from the sports company and go for these two games. And I've heard Charles tell this story a million times. It gets a million better. times with, with his Auburn and which well, I would have never gone to Auburn, of course. <laughs> uh, but, uh, uh, and the, cho- the, the story changes a few times over the years. I think one time I had 50 at halftime. Obviously, well, I didn't even have that many. Uh, but it was it was fun to to to, to com- basically compete against some of my heroes. I mean, they they had a great team there, and and it was uh, it was super fun for us and, and a huge honor. Not knowing that basically a, a year later I'd, I would be in the NBA. I mean, I had I had no idea this was going to happen like that. Yeah, the the punchline of Dirk, you're seven feet tall. You're not going to be in the army. You can't hide is always good. <laughs> 
For sure. Yes, that's always a hit. What would you have done if you had to go to combat? Like, what would have been your specialty? You know, I was... In- do, do not reveal the secrets of the German army. The German army was a good... I don't know. I, I think I was more... I wasn't really on the, the front line kind of guy. I think what we... Yeah, were, I don't think so. I, what we were training was more in the back, coming in and, you know, serving and uh, replacement of machines and stuff like that. That's... Uh, that's what I was trained to do, but uh, uh, we still had to learn how to march and, you know, shoot a gun, clean your gun, take your gun apart. I mean, we do all that in basic training, and uh, and then for the other eight months, I was I was able to train like a like a true professional. Man, just imagine like that wall climb, and everyone's trying to climb up, and you just like grab the top and lift yourself. I, know, I just yeah. think train. There'd be moments of training that'd be hilarious. So, so Derek, Derek, we know you got to go. Uh, last question. Do your children know who you are? My children don't know who I am. <laughs> well, I, I guess a little bit they understand. Uh, I mean, they were young when when I retired, and so no. But do they? No, but do they ask you about basketball stuff? I mean, they understand that I played. They understand that I played, but they're not really. I think everybody else was always better. I guess they saw me at the end when I could barely move, and now you know I have some ankle issues, so I'm, I'm hobbling around. They're like. Papa, you're way too slow. You, you, never, you never really played in the NBA. So then I pull up a couple of YouTube clips, and they're, they're so grainy back in the days. The footage was so awful. So it, it doesn't really help my case. So uh, maybe one day they'll understand it a little more. I mean, because I'm still getting bills for trainers, and I'm like, did this guy play in the NBA? No, he didn't play, but, he, but he's what? I played in the NBA 30 years. Like, but okay, whatever. <laughs> Whatever you need, son. Oh, that's funny. Dirt, last, last question. Who was the biggest Shiza Dunkov in the NBA? <laughs> hey, listen, I played with 20, 21 years. Uh, there were some, some Dunkov. Uh, <laughs> I, I think I've had, honestly, in total, I had about 200 teammates in my 21 years, and they were from yeah. Dunkov. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we're, uh, it's like I, can't, part of the game. I can't tell you what that means, Lefko. Look it up. 